can be so confusing that sometimes it is hard to know what the heck they really mean by the things that they do or the things that they say. So today, we're learning how to decode our men with help from the people that are closest to them. Now, this is Kathleen, and Kathleen is worried about her husband, Jason, because it seems that there's one thing Jason loves, and maybe he even loves it more than Kathleen. What's that? Jason has this toy model car collection and toy car, toy model motorcycles, and it is huge. It's ridiculous. Wait, is that your bedroom? That's, yes, that, yeah, it is. You can see it's just everywhere, and it's just taken over our bedroom, our house, our finances, and it finally just drove us to be separated because I can't sleep in a room like that. Oh, my gosh. Tell me about being intimate and looking at the cars. I understood oh. that was an issue. Yeah, well, he moved them into the bedroom, obviously, because they were so pretty. He wanted to see them all the time. And I'm just, I don't get worked up by plastic and metal and tires. It's just like, I don't want to be intimate in a garage. Thank you. I don't get revved up by that stuff, you know? I Tell me about I the ritual. He, did, he used to have this ritual. Yes. What's the ritual? Yes. Every day before he would go to work, he would open up all the little doors and open up the hoods and open up the trunks. And every day when he came home from work, he would close all the doors and close all the hoods and close all the trunks. And I'm like, why are you doing this? He said, well, I deliver food. It brought me better tips one night. I'm going to keep doing it. Maybe oh it'll help. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, you are insane. I wonder if it's a little bit of OCD, a little obsessive compulsive it disorder. It could be, but I'm yeah. like, can I just break off the doors that would always be open? <laughs> and so it's gotten so bad that you guys have separated? Yeah. Yes, sure? we have. It's just, it's, I can't sleep in a room that's filled with plastic like that. Yeah. You know, I just, and it seems like he cares about this stuff and this collection and getting the next thing more than me. And if you're spending money on this, why aren't you bringing money home to help us? Yeah. What is going so on? So you're I separated just, to different it. homes. Yes. Still married. And obviously you want your marriage to work because you're here. Exactly. I want to understand why is it that this means more to you than me? Okay. Why is it that this means more to you than being stable? Yeah. Well, to understand a guy's Peter Pan syndrome, sometimes you have to talk to his family. And that's why we've asked Jason's Aunt Ruth to be here today. Hi, Aunt Ruth. Stand on Hi. up. Hi. Hi, Aunt Ruth. So can you tell us what is it about the cars with your nephew? Why is he so obsessed with them? Um, when Jason started to collect things, it was a sense of accomplishment. He can go from the beginning till the end, and it would make him feel that he's done something. He's not very happy at where he is now in his life, and that sense of accomplishment makes him feel good. Although I think it's misguided, I don't think that um, he can speak as freely as he should to Kathleen so that their relationship could work. Got it. So he's funneling all that into the cars. That's yes. a sense of accomplishment. All right, let's meet your husband, Jason. Come on out, Jason. Hi, Jason. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good. So, so your aunt says that uh, you are not happy in life and don't feel like you've accomplished things in this. The cars give you a sense of accomplishment. Is that true? Um, well, basically, I, you know, I um, can't afford to have sports cars. Uh, you know, it's uh, very expensive. Not and, many people can afford those. Right, very, right. Very, very and, expensive. You know, I love, I love the cars. It's part of me. It's part of something I've always done. You know, I've done it since I was a small child, building cars and collecting them. So Aunt Ruth said that she broke down that he's not happy about his life now. He doesn't feel accomplished. Do you think that's true? I can, I can agree with that because I see how he is every day. And he comes home and is like, man, I hate my job. It's like, you know what? You have these cars and you have these motorcycles and you know all the parts to them go to school learn how to fix them or work on them or teach other people how that to work on them. That would be actually really cool. So Cooper is back with us the relationship therapist Cooper Lawrence. What do you see here Cooper? Um, I, you're asking him to explain himself but you're talking to an addict who you can't ex mm -hmm. addicts can't explain what's going on with them. Got Aunt it. Ruth had a good explanation but sometimes people closest to people who love you want to have a good logical explanation but that's never what it is. It's something much deeper. There's something going on that you're willing to risk your marriage. You're willing to risk your financial security and you're willing to risk yourself as an individual. There's so much more to you than this. So it's worth it for you to get to the root of what it is. Why you need to, to put yourself in the surrounding because the measure of a man is what you surround yourself with. People who love you is what you're pushing away. You're surrounding yourself with these little model cars. That's what you need to get to the root of. Why? See, I'm going through my life trying to figure out me too. Mm -hmm. And she can't figure out me because I can't even figure out me. So are you saying that you're happy separated maybe? No, I'm definitely no. not. So you want your wife back? 
Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I like then, my bedroom I back. Mean, I mean, I, <laughs> I love her more than I love my cars. I'd be willing to take every one of them, put them in a box, and stick them in storage okay. somewhere. Okay. We'll be right back. And she's a self-proclaimed shoeologist and author of Never Trust a Man in Alligator Loafers. <laughs> okay, so what does that mean? Why not trust a man in alligator shoes? Well, have you ever met a friendly alligator? Oh, that means he's gonna bite you. Yep, especially at 3 a.m. when he calls you when he's got something on his mind. Oh, so he's a booty call biter. That's right. You got it. <laughs> okay. So explain what, what shoeology is all about. Well, I noticed in my own dating experiences, I was breaking up with men for the exact same reasons why I didn't like their shoes in the beginning, but I dated them anyway. Really? Yep. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. I, uh, I just tried to hook up my, my stylist, sorry, Yanis, <laughs> and uh, she looked at the guy's shoes and she says, uh-uh, I can't do it because of the shoes. And I was like, how shallow? So it's not shallow. It's not shallow at all because she's wow. picking up what I call a soul impression. You're catching up, you're catching a vibe. Okay. You're catching like an intuition based on his shoes. So what do you what do you look for when you're looking at the shoes? Is it like the condition of the shoe? Absolutely. Condition, maintenance, and situation are the three most important situation, things. Situation, what does that mean? Well, is he wearing Tevas in the city? Oh gosh, Tevas in the city. Yeah. Not good. Okay. So Donna's gonna help us decode three guys here with a quick shoe reading. So we've got three guys from our audience that we just pulled out of the audience. We're gonna keep their faces hidden. We're gonna examine their shoes. Okay, so we've got shoeology man number one. He's got Mr. White Sneakers. Can you see that far? What's up with those? What's, who is he? What's up? What's, what's he about? All right, so we've got white sneakers. Well, statistically, white sneakers are the non-communicators. They fly under the communication radar screen because the biggest, say, the biggest things that they say is that they say nothing. They're not one way or the other. And also, they're white. They're a sneaker, but you can't really play sports in them. You can't really get them dirty. Oh. <laughs> so it's, that's probably actually why they're so comfortable. You know, men always say, oh, I wear shoes because they're comfortable. White sneakers are so comfortable because they're not communicating. They're not communicating. So, let's meet Mr. White Sneaker. Come on out. <laughs> so, Dan, Dan, this is Dan, Mr. White mm -hmm. Sneaker. She said that you are not a big communicator. Is that true? Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I've been told. Are you serious? Yeah, I've been told many times by friends, family, and girlfriends too that uh, I tend to keep things bottled up and keep things inside. So she was right. Yeah, she was exactly Ding right. Ding on one. Okay, thank you.